Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wheels of Faith Garage. We are currently driving a 2011 Jeep Patriot. We just bought sight unseen for a thousand bucks. I was told it runs and drives and it stops. I don't care who you are, that's worth a thousand bucks right there, especially in today's market. This vehicle has been sitting for a while. Uh, and because it has a transmission issue, which I was well aware of, that was discussed, and just found out it has uh, does have remote start. The heat does work, so that's all bonus. The tires were replaced last year, and it looks like I had brakes put on last year as well. And. By the sound of the brakes, we're knocking the rust off of it. <laughs> slight, slight pulsation from the tires being somewhat flat spotted. I'm hitting the brakes right now, I can feel them. Ain't no biggie, stops and goes. Uh, we do have enough gas to get home. There is insurance still on it. We're still working on the title stuff, ain't no biggie. To the gentleman I work with and I trust him, work with him. Uh, it does feel like this is a CVT transmission, so that's something. It's really weird. Woohoo! CVT transmissions have always been weird to me. I don't like them. I seriously, seriously don't like them. Because when you accelerate, you have like one RPM it just kind of rides at, and then you, and then it, it accelerates. You know, the, the speed goes up. It's kind of crazy. But she's got cruise control. Uh, we do have our scanner. Not ours. It's actually my buddy's scanner. Same buddy I just bought this off of. He let me use it. Uh, does have a check engine light. Scanned it. Has the EVAP code for a small and a large leak. So we'll address that at some point. But the biggest thing was I wanted to see the transmission codes. And there aren't any at the moment. Uh, last time he drove this, he had cleared it before driving it back home, and then it didn't mess up on the way home. So when it does mess up, it always does it when uh, you're at highway speeds. So, we're gonna, well, this thing is kind of peppy, though. I can tell you that. It's kind of fun. So watch this acceleration, it's crazy. We're staying about three grand, and then our speed just keeps coming up. It's so weird, no shifting. But here's the weird part. I, I'm gonna play with this here shortly, and we'll do it together. Down here on the shifter, you can go right and left when you're in drive to shift up and down. It's got an auto stick. How does that make sense? I don't know. We're going to play with it here shortly. That is just really, really weird to me. But, looks like we got butt warmers. That's kind of nice. What, are there? what else have we got in here? We got auxiliary plug over here on the radio. We're probably going to be replacing that radio. We got to figure out what we want to do with this thing. Obviously, we're going to fix it, but we're going to hang on to it a little bit and drive it. We're going to fix it and flip it. We fix it and do like a giveaway or something. I don't know. I'm really not sure. But first things first, we've got to clean this thing out. It's kind of nasty. But for a thousand bucks, runs and goes. Heat works. I'm assuming the AC does work. I don't really know, but yeah, we'll get her detailed. Here, fixed up. We'll check back soon. So I'm playing with this uh, auto stick right here. All right, so we go down one, then it kicks it into, and you can look there on the dash or put it to a six. 
so it's like six gear and then we kick it down again it goes to five and this gives us a higher rpm and it kind of gives us that hold back in that rpm so i can see how that would be good if you're like in the mountains or something but as far as like racing and stuff i mean i guess maybe to hold higher rpms but i doubt it i think it's mostly for navigating through mountains and going down hills and stuff so it's kind of a cool feature but nah for a cvt transmission nah it's whatever but hey the heat works the radio works i'm stoked i'm happy that'll work so so far smooth cruising do have low tire pressures we checked them all they're just under 30 something they're like 20 six or something i don't know be enough to get us home we got about 30 minute drive left and most of this drive is is back roads but we're gonna have to go kind of slow on the highway keep around 60 mile an hour because like uh like my buddy said there you get the highway speeds and what is when it messes up so I do have the scanner though, so I can clear the code out, you know, when it does go into fail safe mode and drive it on back. So we'll see how it goes. Just want to mostly focus on getting it back to the house right now. Because it's Sunday. I decided that today I'm gonna rest. Just as God did on the seventh day. <laughs> Uh, we're just cruising on down the highway about between 60 and 65 we're at about 2,000 rpms not too bad rides pretty smooth no issues yet I think I'm gonna chance it and uh, we get on the big highway because right here on this it's 60 mile an hour So we get up to the highway, 65, see how she does. Well, as you can see, we're currently doing about 72, 73. RPM is about 2,300 or so. And at the moment, it seems to be doing just fine. Um, which, you know, I was told this issue was intermittent. I believe he said the code was something about a torque converter clutch staying applied or not staying applied or, or something like that uh, we're gonna actually kind of need to get this thing to mess up so we can get a code so we can diag it determine if it's a wiring issue or a transmission control module issue or an internal transmission issue itself I'm honestly not sure what exactly to do. I've tried Googling, you know, the symptoms or whatever, and they're not really coming up with anything because we don't have a specific code. So, I'm probably, let's see, today's Sunday. I'm going to rest today. Tomorrow will be Monday. So, Monday morning before going into work, I'll pull this thing in the garage, top off our tire pressures, uh, run the EVAP test because the snap-on modus can do that and uh, we'll put air in the tires we'll check all of our fluids you know maybe vacuum wipe down the inside real quick and then we're going to drive this thing back and forth to work uh, until we get it to mess up so we can get an exact code and, and be able to diag it from there we're hoping for a simple wiring issue that we can fix i don't know who we is but i guess you and me all of us together perhaps i don't know but we gotta get that figured out before we can do anything else you know before we either sell it drive it keep it or uh, a giveaway i don't know i don't know if we got enough subscribers to do a giveaway or something but we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll pray about it right see what the lord has us to do with this car but other than that it's driving great for a thousand bucks, I mean, yeah, it's got all the miles, but I mean, oh, hello. The 
for a thousand bucks a car that you can get in, hit the key, and go. Yeah, that is worth it to me. We'll get her fixed up. We're almost at the house, getting there. I don't know if you can hear me, but we made it home. She's actually really clean for what it is. Check this out. Look at her. She's cute. Even with the goofy lens that I'm using. Cleaned up pretty good. I'm not mad at that. That thing is clean. Wow, it is windy out here. Windy, windy, windy. And the camera makes it look even cleaner than what it actually is. I love it. Got some frog lights. Alright. I'm going to go recognize the Sabbath day. <laughs> I'm going to go chill. It's Sunday. Had a great church service earlier. We got our vehicle picked up. Uh, we'll come back out tomorrow and mess with it. It's the beginning of March and it's like snowing hard right now. And then tomorrow, it's supposed to be in the 50s. Next day, 60s. That's Ohio. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> it's cold. How about that? Good deal. Let's get this beast brought in here and check some fluids and air pressure. So right out of the gate, definitely, definitely want to get these tire pressures brought up. Yeah, we're at like 26 or something. The door says 32. Well, it looks like these brakes are newer. Yeah, we'll get a closer look at those here in just a few minutes. So spec is 32. I'm going to put them at 35. Because it's going to be getting a little chilly tonight. Yeah, these tires are pretty pretty nice definitely newer for sure well they got goodyear assurance all seasons name brand tire yeah tires alone about worth the purchase price my goodness tires are expensive these days so my thought is, is after we set these tire pressures we'll go ahead and pop the hood real quick and we'll go ahead and check some fluids make sure everything's up We'll be driving this thing to work today. And we're gonna monitor the transmission. See what we can see, if anything doesn't look right. We can see if, uh, see if she pops a code and messes up. I don't know, we'll just see. It didn't mess up on us yesterday when we were driving at home. That 45 minute drive. But I'm excited to see underneath this hood Mostly because I've never been underneath the hood of one of these. And as you can see, I let this garage become a mess again. It's just really, really difficult. When you got all these jobs going on. And then you have to go to work right after finishing one. Or you got you know, something you got to go to, some family event. Or whatever it is. Oh, okay, it was a plastic clip. <laughs> I was like, man, I broke something. Anyways, just a bunch of excuses. Lots of family things going on all the time. Lots of work going on all the time. Normal job. Like it's just it's life, you know what I mean? It's good good stuff. It's good stuff. It's kind of time consuming as all. Well. Need to come out here in a good couple hours. Have this place cleaned up again real nice like. And get our stuff here put away. From where we had to chase that thread 
on a video that you guys haven't seen yet. So disregard what I was about to say. I can get this guy put back. That clears up a lot of room here on her bench. It's just more stuff. Oh my goodness. Whatever. All right, tire pressures are good. We got some room to work and walk around. Let's get underneath this hood real quick because I am very, very curious as to what it, look, how do you even release the thing? Where's the release? Does it come up any more than that? Oh my, I can feel it. There's nothing, there's like, what the heck? Haha. -ha. Well, where's the other? There it is. Oh. Okay. Prop rod, where are you? Wow. Oh, I am so out of my element here. <laughs> so the first thing I see is this. This obviously is our powertrain control module. It's, I mean, it's right there. That's great. But, oh man, it's, it just seems like it should be in more of a protected spot. Wow, okay. Um, all right, let's, looks like we got our, like fluid central over here. Where's our light? There's our light right there. How about that? I actually found it first try, first rip. And wow, okay, we're off to a bad start here, guys. Real bad start. Radiator fluid. We got a wee little bit down there. Uh, well, we got to add quite a bit. Looks like it's orange, so I might need to pick up some of that. Uh, washer fluid. Washer fluid is empty. We got some. I throw it in there. Power steering fluid. It's dark, but it's there. It's in between the add and fill. That's good. Previous owner said he might have changed the oil since the last uh, whatever. He said the sticker is probably not accurate. According to the sticker, it was due like 2,000 miles ago. So let's see what she reads now. Where'd the hole go? There it is. Fudge. She's low on the stick. Is it dirty? Oh, yeah. Are you guys seeing that? She's like almost a quart low. And it's dirty. So we need to put oil change towards the top of the list. And I think I have some 20. I'm gonna get that topped off real quick. Oof. This engine looks somewhat familiar though. I don't know. Looks like something was starting to want to put a nest in there. Well, I got some random oil here we're going to go ahead and put in there. I'm only going to have it in there for a few days before we get it changed. So we got a wee little bit in here. We'll bring that 5W30 conventional. Okay. And what's the other one we got? This stuff's old. It's been sitting around for a while. I'm not even sure where it came from. Might as well use it up. This might have been for the mini bike or pit bike. I don't know. It's 1040. It's kind of thick. We're going to use some of it though. Oh yeah. I'll tell you what. When you need oil and you don't have any oil, you'll put in just about whatever it takes. Yeah, it's way thicker. We might have to start running something like this in uh, the F-150 because, well, it's got 260-some thousand miles on it. 
she's a little wore out. I notice that when I run Lucas in it, it seems to like it a lot better. Okay, why aren't we coming up at all on this dick? What's happening? Oh boy. Is it not making its way down? What's happening? Is this a Jeep thing? Can you put oil in a Jeep and it not actually come up? I'm not sure. Between these two, it's almost an entire court. So I'm not sure what's happening. Boy, the battery is buried right down in there. What is up with this thing? It's so weird. CVT fluid. At least we got a dipstick. Gosh. All right, well, that's pouring in there. I want to look at the serpentine belt here real quick. It seems to be in decent shape. I don't see any splits. I don't see any cracks. Well, it's definitely a maze. My Atlanta. Okay. So we're going to need to make a list to get some fluids to top this thing off. We're going to need to do an oil change. We're going to need to get some coolant to top that off. We're going to do some washer fluid. <coughs> brake fluid is up there. Okay. We know it's got brake fluid. I might have to put some used stuff in this to get the level up. Oh my. What is happening right now? I'm not sure. Yeah, we came up a little bit. We're down here, but the safe zone is up in here. I might need to, like I said, put a little bit of used stuff in there. But I don't want to do that because that stuff might have coolant in it too. I'm not trying to wipe bearings. Hmm. Yeah, I might just have to run over there to the O'Reilly's and grab a quart. But if we're going to grab a court, we might as well grab uh, five quarts and just do an oil change on it. It probably has a dang Fram oil filter on it or something. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of coming up a little bit. Not quite in the safe zone yet. So yeah, we'll stop at O'Reilly's on the way to work and grab a quart. Top that off. But considering the mileage though, 200 and, what was it, 40 some thousand miles? That's about to be expected, I reckon. I don't know what all that crap is. Thing set for a while, I can tell. Definitely promise you that. Okay. I don't know when the spark plugs were last done. I don't really have any kind of. Not, not a lot of history on this at all. Let's see if we can put some washer fluid in it, see if it all pukes out or not. Let's just double check. Yeah, washer fluid. <laughs> when I was a little, little kid. I went to top off the washer fluid on my dad's like Subaru something back in the day and uh, put washer fluid in the coolant. Oh my gosh, how old was I? Seven, eight, maybe nine, I don't know. Dad was upset about it, but he was also like, that's really sweet that you tried to do that, but don't do it no more. <laughs> I don't see any leaking out. I think I have some coolant that's all vehicle. I prefer not to do that. It's not leaking on the floor. Sweet. I think we're gold in there. And let's double check the power steering fluid one more time. Yeah, it's in between the marks. That's fine. And the coolant, we do need to put a little coolant in there. 
Uh, I think starts up good. I'm assuming the battery's fine. And probably go ahead and grab an air filter when we do the oil change. And we're going to see if this thing has a fuel filter. All of the things. Mm -hmm. And then if we can get it to mess up. I don't know. We'll see what we find. Cross that bridge when we get there. Yep. All of the things are happening. Let's do a quick light check. Oh, they're kind of foggy. Just going to do a quick light check and make sure we got some lights. We can see those. They seem to be working. So we got lights there. We got lights there. Do we have license plate lights? License plate lights are out. That door skin's been replaced or something. That's freaking weird. There are lights up here though. to fix that one it seems to be working we got some flashes back here the flasher there okay good enough so I need to write that down license plate blubs how about the high mount stop lamp I don't know because I can't push the pedal and be back there at the same time I wonder if I can get a pry bar in there though. I do want to see if all those brake lights work. That should work. But it fell before I could get back here. Okay, yeah, I got brake lights. Okay, so just after a, a quick look over uh, we gotta grab a little bit of coolant and license plate bulbs, which we might have some LED ones that we could throw in there. We got a bulb over here, we gotta replace. Uh, get a quarter of oil. Hey, just some small things, just uh, real quick. But overall, seems okay to drive. Obviously, we drove it all the way here. Um, I we need the the biggest thing is the transmission issue. Uh, it'll put you in fail-safe mode where you can't accelerate over X miles an hour. You, you know, you can't throttle up. You have to pull over. So we want to fix that. That's the biggest thing. All this other small stuff is just small stuff. You know, bulbs, fluids, whatever. Oil change, no biggie. Um, it's, yeah. Once again, we're, you know, about ready to have to go to work. So... It's weird that I'm like freaking out about time, right? Because I'm like, oh, I don't have time to do this. We are just a few minutes ago earlier in the video. I was like, I'm going to take the day off and I'm going to rest. <laughs> that would have been the time to do it. But it's fine, guys. It, this stuff, it's, it's nothing. You know, you just keep on moving with it and going forward. And you just fix things as they come along. And, you know, there's nothing here that's like, oh. <gasps> So, but drive it back and forth to work. We can monitor, get it to mess up. We, you know, so as we're driving it, we're diagging it. I gotta show you this door though. This door is so weird. We can do a little walk around on this thing too. All right, let's walk around this thing real quick. You know, we got some terrible lighting. So we got our frog lights, which is cool. Uh, looks like this one here got some moisture in it and then our headlights are kind of foggy so we can do a treatment on those mm -hmm. here are typical scratches and, and whatnot in the paint I mean it's to be expected but all these lights do work so that's cool uh, we can probably grab new housings you know some aftermarket stuff for those 
uh, aftermarket, you know, fog light housings, whatever. This thing's pretty straight, though. It is pretty straight. Like I said, excellent tread on the tires. Beautiful. Uh, definitely set for a while. Can you see the rotors? They got some rust on them. But if you look close, I might have to bring the light up, but there's still some gray right there indicating those were recently replaced, but then they sat for a long time. To my knowledge, this thing sat about eight months. Yeah, she's, she's pretty straight, though. And I don't see any rust. Now, like I said, we haven't been underneath it yet, but at the moment, I haven't seen any rust. We got rear drums. Like I said, nice tires. Oh, oh, what's that? What's that? Can you see it? Might be a little rust starting to happen there. Let's see. Yeah, back bumper's good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Pretty straight. Pretty straight. So latitude. Not to be confused with the Latitude X, which is worth way more money. It's right there. You can kind of see the difference in the doors. It's so weird. I don't understand what's happening, but it's really weird. Well, we got some more. Start of some cancer, maybe. We'll just not ever touch that again. Yeah, let's see, good tire. Rear. But look at this. Are you able to see the difference? Yes, absolutely you can. Yeah. You hear that difference? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously it's fiberglass, but you can see it in the texture. I'll have to ask my buddy about that, because that's just weird. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, a couple... Cancer spots getting ready to come through, but overall, pretty nice shape. I don't mind the look of this. I don't hate it. But like I said, with the remote start, you know, heat, AC might work. Right now, it's honestly too cold to tell. But she don't look bad. Not too bad at all. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, unless we get some shots on the way to work of it messing up or something. I don't know, but perhaps we'll come back uh, tomorrow or sometime this week, go ahead and bust out the oil change, you know, get it up in the air, check suspension and all that stuff, really kind of get into it more, but preliminarily, pre preliminarily, it's fine. All right, we went and came over here to the O'Reilly's and got some Earl, some O'Reilly Earl. And we're going to see if we can do this one-handed. I did go ahead and top off the coolant. We're good there. Xerox Valvoline coolant. Never heard of it, but whatever. Now we're going to dump this whole thing in there. One hand with no funnel. Let's see if we can do this. I'm liking it so far. If we remember on that stick correctly, it needed like the whole thing. So we're just gonna dump the whole thing in there. Oh yeah, she's getting thirsty. Clean, clean, yummy oil. Gotta love that conventional. Like I said, this is just to get us up until we uh, do the oil change. It'll run probably a full synthetic. I don't know what brand. Probably O'Reilly's brand, but maybe a full synthetic. I don't really know. Let's see what it actually calls for. It might be a synthetic blend. I don't know. Whatever it calls for is what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to check the oil. Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what our oil looks like now. 
It is right there in the safe mark. Can you see it? I can. It's right there in the safe mark. All right. That makes me feel a lot more comfortable. All right. I'm out of here. Gotta go to work. I'll give you all some updates here shortly. Well, it's been a few days and this transmission is not acted up. So, I don't know. I'm gonna check some connections here in a little bit. But let's go ahead and jump inside and start cleaning this thing up. We gotta get some of that uh, cigarette smell. Ugh, gotta get it out of there. It's kinda gross. Yep. I do have it loaded up with air fresheners and those blue ones are already in here. But we got ourselves a little Bluetooth thing hooked up so we can listen to some tunage. But yeah, we gotta get this thing cleaned up. We'll get it vacuumed and spray some smell good and cleaner stuff and I don't know. I'm not a detail guy, okay? <laughs> I'm really not. I got a guy for that, but just in the interest of uh, a quick cleanup, I'll hop right in there. Let's get after it.
cleaner especially up through the center console area yeah we still got stains on the seat but I'm not a detail guy I don't have the proper equipment to shampoo that the dash is looking clean I'm gonna go ahead and do the windows which is my absolute absolute worst like I hate doing windows windows yay Okay, good enough for now.